In an energy-hungry world, the jet may be a step along the road towards a virtually unlimited source of electric power. I think there's a lot of promise for fusion producing clean, reliable, safe energy for the future. What we have done over the past few years and earlier this year is produce fusion power here on site at JET. In 1983, the Joint European Taurus, or JET, began operations, hoping to bring us closer to the promise of a clean, unlimited energy source, nuclear fusion. We know that nuclear fusion works. When the weather's nice, like it is today, we can look up to the sky and see a nuclear fusion reactor. But the real difficulty comes when we try to harness that power and produce nuclear fusion reactors here on Earth. And with JET preparing to make way for the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER, what will it take to reach that goal of unlimited power? So fusion, it is a process whereby two light atoms fuse and release energy. And it is essentially what happens in the sun. What we do at JET is one particular strand of fusion, which is called magnetically confined fusion. We use a machine called Tokamak, which is a big metal donut under vacuum, surrounded by all sorts of magnetic coils that produce the fields that confine the plasma. Once they are confined, we heat them up to 150 million degrees, that sort of temperature, and at that point, fusion can take place. In 2022, JET announced a record for fusion energy output at 59 megajoules over the course of a five-second pulse. Now, they're looking at how to scale that up. So we're looking to take something of the scale of the sun and compact it down into something that we can do here on Earth. Uh, and that takes a lot of effort and design and experiment to try and get that to work. JET is currently the only machine able to operate with tritium within its fuel mix, and ITER will use these results when it begins operations. So JET was designed from the beginning as a machine that would use deuterium and tritium, and so it would get radioactive on the inside. In addition to deuterium and tritium, a lot of the components are made of beryllium, which is highly toxic. The designers decided very early on on, on this remote handling, which gives us the, the experience for the next machine, because the next machine, ITER and, and beyond, definitely in a reactor, everything will have to be remote handling. What room are we in right now and what's it got to do with fusion? We are in the in-vessel test facility, which is a one-to-one -one replica of the inside of the tokamak. This is really the size of the machine. This has been built to test components and in particular to test the remote handling mascots and all the remote handling tools that people use to do the maintenance, do the repairs on the machine, do all the changes that are needed inside the machine. JET is coming to an end. For its final act, it will be laying the groundwork for its successor, ITER. ITER is the next machine. ITER is a worldwide collaboration between seven partners. And it's a machine that is linearly about twice the size of JET, in volume is about 10 times. And it's a machine that, for the first time, is aimed at delivering more energy than what is put in for fusion. In all the experiments that we've done so far, we have produced by fusion less energy than what we put in. ITER is aimed at producing 10 times more energy than what is put in. It will not just go bigger, it will go much longer. It's got superconducting magnetic field coils, so the pulse length, what is now on jet, about 30 seconds, let's say. On ITER could be, you know, 15 minutes, something like that. So ITER is going both longer and bigger to give us more fusion. So I think we'll start to see a working prototype plant that will demonstrate the, the feasibility of fusion power on the grid in about 2040, given the knowledge that we have at the moment uh, and the investment that we're seeing uh, both at UKAA but also in private industries that are pushing us towards that goal. I think there's a lot of promise for fusion producing clean, reliable, safe energy for the future, especially to combat climate change. There's a lot more investment in that both here and in private companies uh, they're helping drive us towards actually realising it on the grid. With the sun setting on jet and rising on ITER, we are about to begin a new chapter in the story of nuclear fusion. But whether it will deliver on its promise of unlimited energy still remains to be seen.